Hi, I'm Tara with Physical Therapy. I'm the one that you all look forward to seeing, right? When you think of a new knee, you think of therapy right away. So I'm here to talk to you about a few things, uh, mainly what we're going to do before surgery, what's going to happen right after surgery, and the goal is to get you home. So the three things that you really want to learn about, right? Uh, first off, if you would have gone to your PACE appointment already, you would have gotten um, a book that's called your joint book. Um, talks about things that you need in there and you would have gotten a two-sheeter that looks like this the first page talks about your home setup so um, how many steps you have things like that yours has a border around it and your name at the bottom as well as a little spot for training at the bottom the second page is recommendations um, from therapy in order to prepare you prior to surgery so I found out in the past few years few years being here that if you do these things, life generally works out better for you after surgery. So I'm going to talk about a few of these, not all of them, but I would suggest reading them all and um, trying to follow them as much as possible, okay? First off, if you have more than one step in a row to get in your house, so consecutive steps, um, and you cannot fit your whole walker on each step, I would recommend having a railing. So one side you'll use the walker, the other side you'll use the railing, um, if you have no railing, you're going to need to use your coach or family friend's hand to push from. We don't want you to push too hard and then you're both injured and there's nobody to help you with your cooking and cleaning, right? So walker on one side, railing on the other side will be beneficial. If you have that ability to put a railing in, that would be great. Next part is if you have... Uh, I want you to walk around your house before you have surgery to decide where you're going to sit. So the main reason for this is I don't want you to get home, look at a chair and think to yourself, I wonder if I sit there if I'll be able to get back up or if I'm going to need some help. So general rule for chairs is if you sit down in the chair, you'd want a ball on your leg to roll off the end. So you can bend your knee up even higher than, higher than that as well. But if you think about it, if I'm sitting like this, I'm kind of partially standing already, so it'll be easier for me to stand up, as well as armrest will help you to stand. Um, the next part is, is maybe avoid those fluffy furniture like your couches or your chairs that give you that extra cushion because sometimes that's hard to push yourself up to get out of it. As far as recliners are concerned, we don't want any swivel rocking chairs. You can sit in a recliner. You just might, might not want to put your legs up right away. So two reasons for that. One is, is when your leg goes out straight on the um, recliner ledge, it doesn't always mean that your leg is straight. Sometimes it's up, but your knee is kind of bent at a partial angle. And when you have that new knee, we either want it bent when you're straight or um, bent back when you're sitting. So straight out or bent. Um, you can prop your leg up on a pillow or something to make it sure it's straight, but what you want to think about is the way down. So when you use a lever or you have to push with your legs, sometimes you get a bit of a jolt and then that won't feel very good on your knee. So kind of be conscious of avoiding that foot rest until you're strong enough to safely lift you and lower your leg up without any help, okay? Um, as far as nighttime is concerned, so most falls occur at night and regardless of a surgery and most falls occur the older that you get. So I would say Place night lights throughout your house, in your bedroom, in your hallway, in your bathroom to ensure your safety. Um, I have night lights throughout my house basically because I have a one and a half year old and I am expecting another one and I do not want to fall either. So that will help things out. When you wake up in the middle of the night, you might think to yourself, I won't forget that I have a knee, I'll be fine. But sometimes you don't recall because you're a little groggy and you forget to grab your walker or if it's summertime out, you forget that your sheets have fallen on the floor because you got hot, and I don't want you to trip over them, things like that. So if you light up your way, it's easier to get where you need to go. Uh, next, kind of in the same respect for being night, put a glass of water, a bottle of water on your nightstand next to you. So the only reason you have to get up isn't just for a drink of water. Sometimes your medications can make you a little thirsty. That way you don't have to have your um, coach get up for you either if you need that. The last thing I want to talk about is shoes from that sheet. So make sure that your shoes have some type of grip on the bottom. I have tennis shoes on. They don't have to be tennis shoe grip bottoms, but they do need to be some type of a grip 
so that when you walk you don't slip and slide. They can be slip-on shoes as well. The only thing is I don't want shoes that slip on and then fall right back off. So if you put your shoes on, kick your feet around a little bit, make sure they don't go flying, that's great. We don't want you in mid-step to lose a shoe and then be in trouble that way. So find a shoe that works for you, um, bring them with you. At some point we'll walk with them. Occupational therapy will also want them to practice getting them on and off, that type of thing. Uh, we won't use them the first day, probably the second or third day, unless you absolutely need them. If you require a certain orthotic or some support in your shoe, please let us know we'll, and we will start wearing them from day one. Okay? Avoid those shoes though that have the rocker bottoms, bubble bottoms, those new balance shoes that are out. Your balance is already compromised, we don't want to make it worse, so just leave those for another day. All right, so that's the gist of this second sheet, but please go over the rest of it. It will be helpful to you. The first page talks about your home setup. So like I said, how many steps you have to get in and out of your house. If there's more than one story, who's gonna help you at home, how tall your bed is, that type of thing. That's important to us because from day one, we wanna set your goals appropriately to get you home um, the fastest. So if you fill this out, I know that it's more accurate because after surgery I found that you're pretty groggy and your coach is pretty groggy and so nobody can really answer my questions for me. And then we don't have any surprises on the last day that your bedroom is upstairs or something like that. We can start working to your goals from day one. Okay? At the bottom it asks who is going to help you at home, who's going to be able to assist you. That's important because unfortunately I don't get to go home with you and neither do any of my coworkers, so we want to make sure that you're safe because I do actually care what happens to you and I want you to be safe at home. That way we can set up a time to help train your coach or your family member to help you out. Um, if your surgery is on a Monday, that would be Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning. If your surgery is on a Tuesday, it will be Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning. Your times are usually between 9 and noon and 1 and 4. We say we're kind of like the cable guy. We show up sometime between there, depends on when you get your pain medication and things like that. If you need a specific time of day, please let me know and I will make sure that it's a specific time of the day. Okay? So that will be important for you to go home safely. Um, if your plan is to go somewhere right away, you can't go home, you uh, don't have any help or you need more assistance at that point, we'll figure it out and we don't necessarily need somebody to come in and work with us. All right. The last thing to do before you have surgery is in your joint book. There is a green tab that talks about hips. Right before that green tab is a blue tab that talks about knees. If you go to that, this first page has a few tips for you. Um, again, we like to repeat ourselves a lot because we found that repeating ourselves is what works the best. Uh, but the next two pages have your exercises on them. Okay? These, if you are able to do these before surgery, they don't cause you immense pain or anything like that. I would recommend starting to do them right away so that you are stronger for when you have surgery. I do realize that you have an old knee right now. You're going to get a new knee, so these might be a little painful. If they cause you too much pain and you're unable to do your daily tasks or um, walk very well, then don't do them. But if you're able, try them out. You will do them at the hospital 10 each, twice a day. When you go home, you will do them three times a day, 10 each, and then your uh, therapist, either at home or an outpatient, will progress your exercises as, as needed. So we will do these here at the hospital, 10 of them each. So if you can do them now, that would be excellent. Okay? Now, after surgery, <clears throat> I have this lovely little thing around my neck. It will call and say, patient is going to room 3102. If that happens to be you, I will have already known that that's you because I'll have your name and your room number on my sheet. I'll look at the time and say, okay, it's 10 o'clock. That means that approximately 11, 15 or 11.30, I can come work with you and get you out of bed. Now, I know that seems pretty fast, but the reason behind that is, is the sooner you move, the better you do. And at the same respect, your knee is probably not your only joint that is stiff on your body. So if you have to lay there for eight to 10 hours without moving, other things might be a little more stiff, so the sooner we get you moving, the better. Now, I may be a little bit later than that time because our mornings may be busy or something like that, so if you get a little extra rest, just consider yourself lucky, okay? Enjoy the rest. 
What we're going to do is we're going to go over that home setup sheet that you filled out for me. We're going to go through those exercises in the book that you've tried to do already. And we're going to sit up at the edge of the bed, finish your exercises, and then go for a walk. Your first goal is to walk from the bed to the carpet and back to bed. Um, that's 30 feet. If you can't go quite as far, that's okay. Nursing walks with you two more times at night. If you can go even further, that's great. I won't let you go excessive, like an excessive amount because I don't want you to become too painful. Um, but our goal is about 30 feet. Okay, we'll see you once that day, unless you are rapid recovery, then we'll see you twice. If you don't know what that word means, don't worry about it. The next day we'll see you twice, and you'll walk with nursing twice. And the last day we'll see you once or twice, depending on what um, you actually need to go home, okay? So the plan is if surgery is Monday, you'll go home Wednesday. Surgery Tuesday, you'll go home Thursday. If you need more care, like I said, we'll have figured that out if you need to go to a care facility or something like that. So those are kind of our plans. If you're feeling nauseous, we can always bring a bucket with us. Sometimes there's medication the nurse can get you. If you're feeling lightheaded, please let me know as well. We'll follow you with a chair, make sure we check your blood pressure, things like that. But sometimes moving, sometimes moving is the best um, for that in the long run, okay? Now your goal is to get you home. The first goal is to walk 150 feet all at one time. So our hallways at the hospital here are 200 feet, so it's about 50 feet less than that. Um, 150 feet, not the first day or even the second day, but by the third day when you go home is your goal. To be able to do the necessary steps and the ramp to get in and out of your house is also important. Um, and then it's not a reason to keep you here, but a good goal to shoot for is one, to get your legs straight, which all the way straight is zero degrees, and to bend it to at least 90 degrees. Eventually your goal will be about 120, 125 degrees, but right now if we can get that knee to bend to 90, we're going pretty well. So during your exercises, we're going to push on your knee to get it straight. We're going to push on your knee to bend it back. It doesn't always feel the best, but I always say work through some of that pain. A little bit of pain for a lifetime of feeling better, not so bad, right? Um, it's a lot of work. It's, I'm sure you've heard from other people that have had their knees done. But exercises are very key, very important to get you going to the best of your abilities. So um, really working through those and working with us will get you to function better in your daily life. Okay? So uh, now I'm going to show you how to use the walker and do the steps. All right. So first I want to go over um, a walker with you. Basically, everybody will start out with a standard walker. A standard walker is a walker that has four pegs on it. There's no wheels. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean that you're always going to stay with no wheels. It may mean that you get wheels on the front eventually. It just depends on your safety. And I would like to tell you I know what you could use right now, but until I work with you that first time, I won't really know. So if you are borrowing a walker, borrow one that also has wheels. If you need to purchase a walker, purchase one that also, also has wheels. Now, if you need one, we can get you one here at the hospital so you don't have to worry about it. At some point before you leave though, I would like you to bring the walker with you so I can make sure that it's your correct height, okay? As far as the height is concerned, if I stand up nice and tall inside of my walker, put my arms at my sides, I want the handles to fall right at my wrist, okay? Um, sometimes if you borrow a walker, it can be too tall and won't go shorter, so it's up here. That won't give you that ability to push through with your arms. And if you're a tall person and you borrow a walker from maybe somebody who's shorter, you move bent over, and we don't want that either because we want you to be nice and tall, right? So that's the keys for the walker setup. But like I said, we'll always adjust your walker too. So at some point before you leave, if you can bring your walker in, that will be helpful. To use a walker, you're going to put the walker to the end of your toes, and then you're going to step into the walker with your sore leg first. So if I had surgery on my right leg, my right leg goes into the walker, push through with my arms, bring my good leg in. So walker, sore leg, good leg. Keys to using the walker is one, you do not step past the front bar. So don't step far in like this. We don't want you to fall over. Next part is, is don't put the walker all the way out in front of you. We don't want you to do a Superman and fall on accident forward, okay? Now when you walk with the walker, the walker goes out, you make a good step in, this way. No walking like this. Okay? Now it's okay if it takes you 20 minutes to get where you're going. We just want to make sure that you're exercising your knee and actually making a good step into the walker. Okay? 
So those are our basic keys for the walker. As far as the steps are concerned, if you have a platform step, which means you can fit your entire walker on each step, I'm going to show you that first and then I'll go over the consecutive steps. Now the steps and how to use the walker is in the going home section of your book as well. So walk up to the step, put the walker right there. The whole walker goes on the step. You go up with your good leg. So if the surgery has on my right leg, I go up with the left leg. Now you might think, but that left my bad leg behind. The reason is, is this good leg has to do all the work to lift my body up. If I try to do it with my bad leg, I wouldn't be able to push myself up. So up with the good leg, and then when you go down, the whole walker goes down, and you go down with the bad leg. Okay? So up with the good, down with the bad. Good go to heaven, bad go to, you can fill in the blanks, right? So now if you have multiple steps in a row, you get nice and close to the step, nice and close to your railing, turn the walker sideways so it's where you are and where you're going. You hold on to the railing, you hold on to the walker, you go up with your good leg again, bad leg, then you move the walker to the next set of steps and you go up. If, when you go down the steps, turn the walker sideways so it's where you are, where you're going, railing, walker, down with the bad leg. Move the walker, down with the bad leg. Now if your steps are very narrow where you don't think the walker will fit sideways on them, this will fit on most standard steps, those front tips are okay just on the step because they'll be supportive that way. Uh, if your steps are very narrow this way, you don't think the walker will fit next to you, uh, we'll use a cane on one side, so make sure you definitely have a railing to help support you on the other side. If you're not sure, measure the width of your steps and we can check it when you're here, okay? We have a few different stair setups that we can work on at the hospital, but we'll try to do it to the best of our abilities to help you with your home setup. All right, so that's the basics for the steps. We'll go over them while you're here. If you wanna practice them before you come, that would be great. Um, just to reiterate, one, we'll see you roughly an hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half after surgery. If we're late, you're lucky. Um, and just remember that it's not definitely a pain-free thing. So you will have a little bit of pain, I do realize that, um, but they'll try to control it with pain medications, things like that. But like I said before, a little bit of pain for a lifetime of feeling better will make everything that much better. So um, I thank you very much and we will see you soon. All right, my name's Eileen. I'm an occupational therapist here at the hospital. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about what the role occupational therapy will be playing um, in working with you after surgery. Some things to know are that we'll be working with you the morning after surgery and we'll be asking you um, to do some things for us such as getting dressed, um, getting up and practicing, um, getting to the bathroom and also practicing shower setup. Um, so we do ask that you bring some clothing with you to practice getting dressed while you're here. Usually the more comfortable the better, so elastic waisted pants or shorts, um, t-shirt, something like that. Also bring your shoes that you plan to wear um, and we'll practice uh, making sure you can get those on and off as well. Um, I'm going to talk about all kinds of different equipment here today and I just want to um, start by saying that insurance does not cover any of these uh, devices that I'll be showing you. Uh, so they are an out-of-pocket expense. That being said, I will be going over the prices that these uh, devices cost through the Mercy Home Medical Store, which is located on the first floor um, of our hospital here by the 10th Street entrance. There are a lot of other places you could obtain equipment as well, um, including your local pharmacy or other medical supply stores. Being that these are an out-of-pocket cost, we want you to let us know if um, finances are an issue for you. There are a couple lending closets that we often refer people to in order to get the equipment that they need. We'll go ahead and start here with everyone's favorite thing after surgery, the TED hose. Okay. Uh, what I have here is a thigh-high TED hose. These are worn to prevent blood clots. Okay. So they're very important after surgery that you wear them. They're typically worn for 23 hours a day. So they're on for um, all hours of the day, except for usually people will remove them either twice daily for 30 minutes each or once daily for 60 minutes. They are hand wash and hang to dry. Uh, the, the first pair, you'll wake up with one on and that's um, included in your surgery cost. If you choose to obtain another pair, you will have to pay out of pocket for that. Um, they usually have you wear these for about three to six weeks, so up until that follow-up appointment with the doctor is usually when they're discontinued. 
They can be a little bit of a challenge um, to put on and take off. And the only thing to know for sure, really, you know, the only restriction you're going to have is um, no twisting of the knee. Uh, so a lot of times with dressing, that can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, if you're able to just, you know, if you're sitting and you're able to just bend straight down to, to reach your toes, that's really, that's good. We encourage you to do that, get that bend in the knee. However, if that's um, difficult for you now, it will probably continue to be difficult after surgery. If you're used to kind of tugging on the pant leg and swinging the leg up, that will put a twist in the knee that we want to avoid. So your options at that point would be to have your coach assist you uh, with the lower body dressing, such as the Ted hose, or also we have some devices here if no one's going to be able to assist you with these. Uh, so I'll go over these devices and I'll kind of give you the pricing um, from our facility here if you choose to obtain them from us. Um, and again, if you do choose to obtain any equipment from us, you could wait until your hospital stay. You do have to have payment at the time of purchase. And I know a lot of times they tell you not to be bringing any of your um, you know, personal items with you into the hospital, such as payment. So you would have to line up with your coach for them to bring you some payment in order to um, obtain the equipment that you need. This is called a sock aid here. This is the standard size. It runs about $15 from our home medical store. These can be a little bit tricky um, once you put this, this tight stocking on here. Sometimes it, it squeezes this really tight and it can be hard to fit the foot through. You also might have some swelling in your, in your surgical leg after surgery, which would make this more difficult. Uh, so we usually have you try out both of these while you're here and then determine which one is a better fit for you. This is the same device, just in a wider size, and it runs $20. So with this device, you just simply hold it with the open uh, side on top, and you're going to do most of your dressing seated if you can, just for safety. Um, so I'd be seated, and I'd kind of have this on my lap. I'm going to pull the stocking all the way down to the toe. And then from there, I'm going to grab a hold of these ropes, and kind of drop it down to my foot. I'll slide my toes in, pull up on the ropes, and that will leave the stocking, um, it'll pull it up over my heel. And then from there, um, usually it's pretty easy then to just kind of bend and pull up the rest of the way. These are also great for um, you know, putting on socks as well if you're having trouble reaching your feet. Got a couple other devices here. This is called a dressing stick, and this is used to uh, remove the, the TED hose. The flat end of the hook right here is what we use. And so you would go ahead and you could pull the, the stocking down and then simply slide this and push the stocking off of the foot. Um, I also have here a reacher or grabber. So this is great for picking things up off the floor. We encourage you to put a little piece of Velcro on here and then some Velcro onto the front of the walker and you can stick this right onto your walker. Because a lot of people have these laying around at home but they're not always where you need them. So if you have it right with your walker, it's always with you. Um, so again, great for picking things up off the floor. Can also be used for helping to get dressed. Um, if you're having trouble reaching your feet to put your pants on, you can grab the pants by the waistband and kind of drop them down to your feet and reach that way. I also have a long-handled shoehorn here, which is going to help with slipping your shoes on. Um, I also have, to go along with that, some elastic shoelaces. Okay, um, so we kind of use those in tandem at times. If you're used to wearing a tennis shoe, they can be a little bit tough to slip into after surgery, and so sometimes people like to get these um, shoelaces that have a little stretch to them, and then you go ahead and just put this into the shoe um, and tie the knot and everything, and then it's a little bit easier. It kind of turns your tennis shoe into a slip-on shoe. Um, these three devices here are sold together, so the dressing stick, the reacher, and the shoehorn, and they're sold as a kit called the hip kit because all of the hip patients um, benefit from this equipment. You may or may not need it um, after your knee surgery. So you could buy them all together in a kit for $25, otherwise they're also sold separately. So again, with this, all of this equipment for getting dressed, um, you know, if you're able to, to bend down to reach your knee, or reach your feet by bending your knee, um, you won't need this equipment, okay? But sometimes right after surgery, that can be a challenge. Or if right now you already can't, aren't able to reach your feet, you may need this equipment or you may benefit from assist from um, your coach.
you can obtain any of this equipment right here in the hospital if you so choose. It's also available at um, any home medical store or a lot of pharmacies would carry it as well. Um, and just let us know if you do have any um, financial difficulty. We'll make sure that you get what you need before you go home. Um, next, I'm going to start talking. Um, we'll address this first here. This is the walker basket. So sometimes people like to have this at home, especially if you're um, going to have to prepare yourself a meal at all and you're alone. Because as you have that walker, both hands are occupied as you're moving. Um, so that makes it difficult to carry items. So something like this really comes in handy. Um, it's got a nice plastic tray piece in the bottom so that things don't fall through there. Um, and it just hooks right onto the front of the walker. This runs about $25 um, here from our home medical store. Next, we'll go ahead and talk about showering. Um, it is okay to get into the shower right away. Um, however, the incision must remain dry while showering. So we use the Glad Press and Seal plastic wrap to make sure that that stays dry. So it's sold next to the saran wrap, but it's sticky on one side, and it's the Press and Seal. And so what you do with that is you just tear off the amount that you would need, place that right over the incision, right over the top of the dressing, and then go ahead and bathe as normal. That's going to make sure that no water gets in there, keeps everything nice and dry. can be simply um, removed after showering. I'm sure everyone has a very different setup for the shower at home, and we'll, we'll discuss specifics while you're here in the hospital, but I like to give a few guidelines, um, just general guidelines about showering. So if you have a walk-in shower, a lot of times people are able to walk right in with the walker and use that for support to negotiate the little step up that you're going to have. Um, and then sometimes people like to use a seat or a bench in the shower. And that's fine, um, you know, if you have room. So that's a little bit of a, a tricky part with that is sometimes there's not quite enough room for something like this in your walk-in shower. Um, if there is room, they're, they're kind of handy to have, um, but not necessarily necessary. Um, we do say, though, you know, to use caution with those built-in seats at home because they're often very low and, and they can be slippery and slick. So um, we try to have you avoid those um, if that's the case. With the tub shower, it's a little bit of um, more difficult to negotiate because we don't want you stepping up over the ledge of the tub right away. In order to step over the ledge of the tub, you have to be able to balance 100% of your weight on each leg independently. And that's going to be very difficult right after having a brand new uh, knee put in. So, um, you know, we say as long as you're still using the walker, you probably shouldn't be trying to step up over the ledge of the tub. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a seated transfer. So you are able to get into the tub shower if you use a, a bench of some kind. Um, so you could obtain one of those, or you could choose to sponge bathe temporarily until you're able to get into that shower. Um, so in order to, to do the seated transfer, I'll go ahead and demonstrate. I would be backing up to the ledge of the tub, and of course I'd have my walker with me. I'd go ahead and kind of reach back and sit. And then I can simply just scoot and bring my legs over the ledge of the tub. We do encourage you to have someone present with you um, during this transfer at home, at least making sure you're able to get in and out safely, as the shower is a very slippery place and an often place for falls. You're going to come out just the same way, bring the legs over, scoot to the end, you'll have your walker there, and you can stand from there. Okay. I'll tell you a little bit about this bench itself. Um, this is a, a short tub bench is what we call it. All four legs are going to fit on the inside of the tub. And this runs $50 from our home medical store. Um, there's a longer bench where two legs are on the inside of the tub and then two legs stretch out over the ledge of the tub to the outside. Um, and that one is uh, about $100 with a 300 pound weight capacity, a little longer and wider. We do encourage you to, we'll have you practice if you have a tub shower, um, we can have you practice with um, a variety of different benches to, to ensure that you have the right choice in what you're deciding to purchase. Um, and again, I do encourage you if you feel that you want to be able to get into that tub shower right away, that you, um, and you know you're going to need some kind of bench to check at your um, garage sales and different secondhand shops as well as those lending closets, because these can get pretty pricey, um, being that you'd be using them for a temporary time. Um, another thing to know about getting in and out of the tub shower with the seat is if you have the glass doors on your tub, 
You won't be able to complete this transfer as I demonstrated because the doors will get in the way. Um, so you would have to remove those and put up a curtain temporarily in order to get into that tub shower with the doors. Uh, next I'm going to talk about seating surfaces at home. You know, we encourage you to have a, a sturdy chair um, with arms, okay, something that's stationary. We, we kind of want to avoid all of those rollers and rockers, um, recliners, things like that. And then you really want to pay attention to the height of the seating surface. For example, this bench here is, is far too low for me. As you can see, my knees are up a little bit too high from my hip. It's going to make it difficult for me to get up from this surface. Um, if I were sitting in a higher seat where my knees are down below my hips, it'd be much easier for me to stand. So that's kind of a good guideline as the height of things go, is if your hip can be up above the knee while you're sitting. It's going to make it a lot easier for getting up and down. And while we're talking about low seating surfaces, I of course have to talk about the lowest seat in the house, which would be the toilet. Okay, a lot of times a uh, standard toilet runs about 15 inches high is all. Okay. So I'm going to show you a, a riser that you can put on top of your toilet to help with that. This here is a 5 inch riser with arms and it runs about $75. I say it's kind of our deluxe model. There's a couple other models out there without the um, arms on them that they run about $30 and a variety of different heights. So this is just placed right on top of the toilet and it's going to give you a little bit of extra height which will make it easier for getting up and down. Um, if you already have a toilet that's high at home, you may just benefit from a grab bar or um, a toilet safety frame to be placed around the toilet to help with getting up and down. Uh, you know, we ask you all of these questions about your home setup, including the height of your toilet, so that we can practice while you're here and determine what kind of equipment that you're going to need in order to go home safely. Those are the big things. I do encourage you to take a look in the joint class book or in the joint book at the goals for OT. Um, that'll give you a good idea of some of the things we'll be working on. But we touched on everything this morning, um, including any equipment that you may need for getting dressed, um, using the bathroom, and bathing. We will be coming in to see you the morning after surgery, so be prepared. We'll be asking you to get up out of bed, get dressed, all those things. And we do want to work with your coach while they're here as well, if they're going to be helping you with any dressing. And then we always like to practice those shower transfers with someone there to help, because we want you to have someone there to help at home. If you have any questions for us, we encourage you to jot them down on the back of your home setup sheet, and that'll come straight to our department so that we can answer your questions. Otherwise, we'll be planning to see you soon.